Welcome to another edition of Friday Functions. This is Mr. Dang, and in today's video, I'm following up on a previous one I made on sending feedback in an email. This time, we're going to be taking that same feedback that we gather inside an app and saving it to a table. Let's check it out. My end goal is to fill a table with all of the feedback that I'm getting from all of my apps. And rather than creating a table from scratch, I always think about data I already have. So let's take a look at the common data service and see the entity for feedback. Here I've pulled up my tenant. And then on the left-hand side, I click data, click entities, and I could see all of the common data service entities. And of course, there's already one for feedback right out of the box. Clicking inside it, by default, I don't see all of the fields, just so it's not so cluttered. Let's go ahead and take a look at all of them just to see what we have available and what's relevant to us. The top right hand corner, by default, things are at the default view. If I click all, it'll show everything. Let's go ahead and sort it A to Z so that all the system fields are together and we could see all the custom fields at the top. The ones that pop out to me that I feel like I'm gonna write data to are title, which I think of as, what is the subject of feedback somebody's giving me? I could put the name of the app inside the title to help with filtering. The other field that's interesting to me is comments. This is where I'm gonna have the user provide a paragraph uh, of text as feedback. Maximum rating and minimum rating, I'm thinking I could probably use that for a star rating, or maybe I could use it for an NPS comment. What's the maximum range of a score somebody could give as feedback? So we're not gonna be using all of them inside this video. I'm gonna leave it up to you to figure out which of these fields is relevant to you, which ones you feel you want to use, up to your imagination. Well, let's jump into Power Apps and see how we're going to actually incorporate this into an existing app. I've pulled up my favorite app, my formative assessment app, and we're going to be using it to add that screen for gathering feedback. Big idea, I'm going to connect that common data service entity for feedback. Uh, I'm going to add a screen for gathering that feedback and sending it to the common data service. And then I'm going to preview things in another app as a kind of dashboard for somebody who's checking out feedback. Let's get started. In this app, I have a settings screen. And on that settings screen, I have a button that I'm gonna have navigate to a new screen for gathering feedback. Walking through similar steps as I did in a previous video, I'm gonna use a screen template for email. This creates uh, all of the fields for sending an email, and I'm going to use those same fields for sending that feedback. First thing that I like to do, of course, is change the theme to the office blue theme. It's a very neat colors scheme. Okay. Let's go to view data sources and add that feedback entity. If it's not already added, I add the common data service. And in the search field, search for feedback. Connect it. I'm going to go back to that settings screen. And I make sure that this button can actually navigate to this new screen that I made. I'll change the title at the top. Instead of email, I'll just call it feedback. Now, the one customization that I'm going to be doing is writing this same information back to that table, that feedback table. Currently, the button is hooked up so that it can determine who to send the email to. It'll actually send the email, and then it'll clean things up by resetting and clearing. In front of that, we'll go ahead and write this data back to the common data service. Start with some commenting code. 
create a new record in the feedback entity. Typically, you would use submit form to save data inside a form. Because we're not using a form control, we can't use that function. So we're going to be using the patch function. Now, patch can do many things. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be writing to the feedback table. So the first argument is, what am I writing to? The second argument is, what, am I, what record am I writing to? Uh, if I'm writing to an existing record, I'm updating a record. If I'm writing to a new record, I'm going to write to defaults, feedback, and this pulls up a blank record with all of the fields from that feedback entity. Title, comments, maximum rating, minimum rating, all those system fields, except they're all blank. So it's kind of like I'm updating a record, except it's just the blank record. Now inside that blank record, I'm going to have it write to two fields. I write them in between curly braces, title and comments. For the title field, I want to save whatever is written into the subject line. Well, the control for that subject line is text email subject dot text. The control for the email message is text email message one. And I'll put that for the comments. Now, if you're encountering an error, that may be because you're not using the display names of the columns. Um, in order to use the display names of a common data service entity, you go to File, Advanced Settings. This is a new feature. It's called Use Column Display Names. Make sure that's turned on. So now, if I were to fill out this form, it'll first send a new record to that feedback table with whatever's written into those fields, then I'll send that email to whoever's typed in here. Let's actually try it. I'll go ahead and put myself here, put in a subject line, formative is the formative app, and my piece of feedback is I'd Let's make this more options in my message. I'd like to have a wider variety of options for question types. I'll click that send button. You can see the ants marching across. Whoa, that was fast. Ants marching across the screen. And if I were to go back to the common data service entity, click data, and I might need a refresh here. Oh, it's already appeared. I did not need a refresh. You could see that it's already written this new record at this time. Now, that's great and all. How do I make this feedback actionable? I'm going to show you just a little bit of it, and then we'll explore it in greater depth in a later video. Here I've pulled up a blank app, and I'm going to connect it to the common data service. I've already connected it, that feedback. And I'll go ahead and insert a new blank screen. But I could, instead of a blank screen, insert a list screen. Now, this list screen has a gallery already. So it's already styled. I just need to point it to whatever uh, table that I want to point it to. So in the right-hand panel, under Data, I'll select Feedback. And then it'll show all of the feedback. Let's go ahead and configure what I want in that Title field and the status for Title. I want Title. And for Subtitle, I want Comments. So now somebody can view all the feedback that's been given. You can extend this further, obviously, by filtering, by creating some actions. So 
somebody could select this piece of feedback and say they're going to follow up on it. We'll leave that up to you and I'll show some more in future videos. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more interesting Power Apps, please subscribe.